Good morning, church. Pastor George here. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today to Ministries by PG this Saturday morning. We're on today's show, we're going to talk about defense and how with God, that could just be your offense. Thank you and God bless. Oh, I almost forgot. Today's show is going to be a little different. I'm combining children's church and faith-based counseling together to give you a parody of my perspective of the hit show Avatar by Nickelodeon. We want to say thank you that this show is amazing, has been a social construct to our society. I enjoy this show. If you ever get a chance to watch it, it's on Netflix. It's a pretty cool show. We want to add a commentary. This parody has nothing to do with the show, at least some parts. It has everything to do with God. Also, the totality of today's show is taking place out of Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. If you ever get a chance to read it, please do so. Thank you so much, and God bless. All right. Enjoy the show. You can pray along with me with the words at the bottom. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for today because you are God in every way. Please be with my friends and family and forgive me if I do not see the world as you see. Please help us to laugh together as sisters and brothers and in all we do and in all we say, please be with us through the day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But that's a pretty large army, and he might need some help. So one man took it upon himself to learn all four elements. And while he has much to learn, he might make a difference, or he might not. Let's see what happens. This is his story. Personal Master Benny Entry, Day 28. I'm doing pretty well here learning how to master all the elements. It's kind of hard. I have to do them a little differently than the current avatar. But watch this highlight. I can't have my phone out, but watch this. Oh, watch this. I don't know who this current avatar dude is, but I'm pretty sure he can't hang with me. <laughs> I'm having a rough time trying to bend all the elements, and it's kind of frustrating. You know, I remember a story in one of the scrolls. I think it's a letter or a book about this man named Peter. He was able to bend, and he kind of walked on water. You see, his bending is not your average bending. It's called faith. It's a lot different from mine. Mine's green screen. But his is faith. You know, his faith required a lot of discipline and and his bending wasn't more so of elements, but rather perspective. And each perspective bent or bowed to God. 
And by doing so, he was able to walk on water. In the story of Peter, he was in a comfortable place, the boat. But then when he recognized it was Jesus, he went out to him in the sea, which his faith in Jesus allowed him to walk on the water. I could imagine the comfortable setting he was in. He desired a new level, a new perspective, a new environment with Christ, which called and ushered him into a place where he is now not in so much control, where he now has to rely on his faith more than his sight, which is a very hard thing to do in a place where you are uneasy. You see, Peter, Peter fell. It wasn't until Peter took his eyes off the prize, Jesus, and was distracted by everything else, he then began to sink in the water. Of course, we see Jesus' faithfulness going to Peter and taking him up and then bringing him back to the boat, saying, why did you doubt? This story resonates with all of us. We all are in our boat. We're able to sit in what we're in. You know, we've grown comfortable in where we are at in life. And yet there are times where we desire a new venture, a new perspective, a new mindset, a new life, a new adventure. And in that will be weariness. It will be unsettlement. That's nothing to be scared of. You see, I'm comfortable where I'm at currently and I'm doing pretty well. I'm gaining every momentum. I believe with growth comes fear. You see, right now I'm comfortable. I'm able to hold my setting, hold my ground where I'm at. But good and bad, if I want to grow, I have to be able to transition from where I'm at here to where I need to be. And that's not so easy. Mastering air is not as easy as mastering water or any other element. It's kind of difficult. If I want to achieve the goal I set out, I got to be able to do this now. And I always have to remember my why. Why did I start this journey? It's because I want to help people. You might be in a situation right now where your goals don't look so promising. But you have to remember your why. I promise if you do, you can do amazing. Don't give up. You're so close. Right now in this transition period, you might doubt, you might waver, you might not believe in yourself. But trust, whatever is inside of you, God put that in you. And nobody can take it away. There's so much in you and you have to keep pushing. You can't give up. There's a lot of people who you don't know who need you. I'm saying this to remind myself and to remind you that there's much in you. Much is given, therefore much is required. And right now, it might not look promising, but I promise it'll be worth it. I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me. Remember that. Your strength doesn't come from within you. It comes from above. But hey, I gotta get back to training. Thanks so much. I hope to talk to you guys soon. All right. Let's see if I can do this. I'm on fire. Ah! Ooh. Okay, it's kind of hot in here. I'll see you guys later. Promises to me. You can pray along with me with the words at the bottom. Dear Jesus, you are good and wise. I will praise you when I rise. Hear this prayer I send. Please bless my family and please bless my friends. Help my eyes to see all the good you send to me. Help my ears to hear calls for help from far and near. Help my feet to go in the way that you will show. Help my hands to do all things loving kind and true. And Jesus, guard me through this day and in all I do and in all I say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome and thank you so much for not only supporting the ministry, but becoming part of the MPG family. Again, it is a privilege and honor to be speaking to you in such a grand arena moment on TV. It's a privilege and an honor, it really is. As you know by now, one of the meanings in PG and NPG stands for the rating, meaning that NPG likes to cater to all ages. The rest of the shows this entire season will have children's church, an intercessory prayer, faith-based counseling, and an intentional conversation. Ministries like PG is viewer funded, which means 
Without viewers and supporters like you, the possibility for the gospel to reach the whole world would be extremely difficult. All our success comes from you, the viewers and supporters. If you wish to support ministry, if the Lord has seen fit in your heart to do so, you can do so in three ways. Four, actually. I'm getting old, Lord. Huh? Uh, five? Five. Sorry. One, by telling everybody. Everybody you know about ministries like PG. Your friends, your family, your cousins, everybody. And if you wish to do so financially, here are the other three. <clears throat> Cash app, Zelle, Venmo. Or you can send it to Ministries by PG, PO Box 56953, Jacksonville, Florida, 32241. Before we go back to the second half of the show, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this moment, this opportunity, Lord, where we can say thank you for your goodness and mercy in our life, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies, for showing up, Lord, and showing out your goodness and mercy, Lord, your glory, Father. It is a privilege and an honor. Lord, I want to say thank you so much for the viewers and supporters of Ministries by PG, Lord. Lord, this show is not only for me, Father. It's theirs. It's yours, Lord. Lord, times are not easy right now, Father. But I want to say a special prayer, Lord, a prayer of benediction for those who despite things, or despite hard coming, still want to extend the reach of the ministry. Father, bless them in a mighty way, Lord. You said your word will go out and not come back unto you void. Father, I know that this message, Lord, is reaching somebody, touching them spiritually, Father. As you are their shepherd, Father, guide us and lead us to be Christ-like individuals as you created us to be. Until your son return. We say thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and enjoy the show. This is the intercessory prayer moment of the show where right now you can bring your request, your desires, your needs to the altar, to the Father's throne where he will acknowledge them Right now, this is a moment where we can come to God with our secrets, with our hopes. Would you do so with me? And let's go to the Father's throne. The Bible says in Psalm 124, If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, If the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. Lord, right now I am with a number of individuals who are in need of you in their situation right now. Lord, I thank you that whenever we come to you, you bend down your ear and you listen to us. Who are we that you would do such a thing? Right now we are here again together searching for our intercessor, Jesus Christ. But right now somebody is on the verge of giving up. Lord, there has been attacks from left, right, up, down, underneath them, on top of them, from the sides of them. There has been attacks all over, Lord. Somebody is in need of you right now to defend their cause, Lord. I'm asking that you stand in the gap for them, Lord. Lord, they're dealing with a mistake. They're dealing with a trial, an error a frustration, a perspective, a dimension. Right now, they might want to give up because it looks like nothing is going to save them. But <laughs> Lord, you are a God that can do above and beyond. Somebody is saying, how am I going to make it? Lord, let them learn to trust you, Father. There's been many before them who've seen a brick wall that has acknowledged you and you turned it into a bridge. Somebody is suffocating right now in a relationship, crying at the midnight hour, Lord. I'm asking you that you turn those tears into a harvest, Lord. Let those tears water the harvest that is to come in their favor, Lord. To the person who's going through something, the enemy has been whispering into your ears saying, there is no way out. 
there's no place for you. Give up. But Lord, I know that you are a omnipotent, omnipresent God, omniscient God that can do above and beyond with the situation, Lord. Do something with somebody right now, Father. Open doors for somebody, set an establishment for somebody. I'm talking, put a miracle on top of a hill for somebody. Protect the integrity of somebody, Lord. Do something for somebody right now, Lord. Hold on to somebody. Let somebody know that you are a faithful father, trusting and indeed in their favor, Lord. Ooh, I'm having church, Father. I thank you for what you are and who you are to us, Lord. Uphold somebody in your mighty right hand. Establish a family. Establish a curriculum. Establish a system that can uphold your people and your children who are indeed in your favor, Lord. Hold somebody, Lord. Lord, I trust you. I know that you are faithful. Not so much because of my faith, but because I'm your child. And I know your children right now are in need of you and that you are listening, bending down your ear for them. Lord, set an establishment for somebody right now, Lord. A business, a restoration, a restitution, a relationship, a miracle, a home. Make a way out of no way, Lord. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Why? Because of your love for us, Lord. Lord, it's not over until you say it's over. So I'm asking you, have the last say in somebody's situation right now. This illness will not win. This deal, this frustration will not win. The enemy will not win. Why? Why? Because God has already won. Mm. <laughs> the battle is not yours, said the Lord. It's mine. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for today, for this moment, this opportunity, so that we can come together and say thank you for your goodness in our life. May this moment we're sharing right now with you, Holy Spirit, have a transformation of power to the individuals watching today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, we're at the intentional part of the show where we can now come together and give an intentional, relational, and very conversational perspective of the gospel. I feel like having church today, so if you would indulge me, I, uh, uh-huh, I need a pulpit. Because <laughs> I need to talk to somebody today. Somebody. Water, please. So, we're coming out of Matthew. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get your Bibles now. Matthew chapter 14. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. But for this reading, we'll read 22 to 27. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples go into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> I might have to move this out of the way because y'all know how I get when I'm preaching. I get moving. So, in this passage, we see, ooh, I like it. I'm telling you, I must be having church. Because I'm sweating, you feel me? But like I said, we see Jesus praying. We find him after he had done a miracles, a miraculous act, right? He feeds the 5,000. He goes and he tells the others, hey, y'all go on ahead. I need some time with the Lord, which shows me now. I'm just reading now. I'm just reading. This is my little synopsis, my, my reflection. There are some prayers that not everybody can hear. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody now. There's some things that should stay between you and God. Because if you told somebody, oh, I didn't mean to suck my feet. I apologize. Because if you told somebody, <laughs> if you tell somebody what you've been praying about, they could just undo your prayer. I'm trying to tell you something now. I wonder why it's not happening. Because you told such and such. I'm not saying this person is limited by God. Please, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if you wish to see some things happen, there is some things that need to be done in secret prayer, in secret between you and God. Mm -hmm. Jesus 
put his disciples on a boat. <laughs> mm, wow, 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 wow. Jesus put his disciples, who he called, who he had favor upon, who he wished things would happen for and was making things happen for. He put them on a boat and sent them. Mm. Told them, this is what must be done. Go, go. I put you here, go. I have called you, go. Mm. The level you at is where I need you, go. Ooh, the office you're at, the situation you're in, I need you there, go. And then, a storm came, ooh, while the disciples were in the boat, doing what must be done, conversing, communing together, trying to fight the good fight, doing, being where God needed them to be. The world has some issues with what God was doing with who he called. I'm going somewhere, please. The world or mother nature, you know, in this picture, in this story, mother nature, but if, if you would indulge me, there happens to be a situation brewing against who God was using. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? There seems to be now a, a fight against God's people. The kindness was thrown back in someone's face. The love was, was being used, taken for granted. Names were being spat on. Situations were miscured. Identities were misplaced. Ooh. It was as if everything the disciples were doing with Jesus, when it was now time for them to be moved to where God needed them in that transition period. Mm. And where, which is all we have. We all have a transition period now. We all share a transition period. And in that transition, we, we, we begin to, oh, what, what did I say in episode five? What did I say? It doesn't make sense what he's doing. It, it's, it don't make sense what he's doing. This just don't add up. It looks like he's, it looks like he's doing the opposite of, what's me, of what must be done. Of course, you can't see this. So what you're doing is you are now trying to answer questions with questions that you have no idea about. Because you can't see, you doubt. Ooh! I'm talking about, there seems to be drama against the individuals God uses. And why is that? Hmm. Why is there so much darkness surrounding around the light God has in his individuals? Mm -hmm. We'll keep on going. We'll keep on going. We'll answer that question. Just keep on going now. So the boat was on the waves and the waves seemed to be against the boat. <laughs> The author writes, but the boat was already a considerable distance, a considerable distance from the shore. To have right the span of where the boat was from where it left, hey, hey, only can mean that he who sent them saw them. Woo, boy, I'm talking to somebody. Oh my gosh. I'm talking about omnipresent, omniscient. I'm talking about where he was at, he still was then there. Oh my gosh. So could it be? He's right there with you. I don't think it's coincidence for the enemy to put you in a mind of hopelessness and doubt, for you to doubt God's integrity and provision upon your behalf while you are now trying to settle in a new territory you put in your life. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite part in verse 24. Buffeted by the wind was the wave. Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. In Acts chapter 2, we see the Holy Spirit come down as a wind filling up the room. In Hebrew, another word for the Holy Spirit is ruach, meaning the wind. We see now who God sent is being confronted by the waves because the wind was against the waves. Mm. This is the picture I want to paint for you. What aids a boat in moving? The wind. Ooh, what was against the waves? The wind. And why was the waves against the boat? We see the wind defending the boat. There seems to be a uh, something happening. This is, why, this is the bigger picture. The boat had gone through some things, but it wasn't capsizing. <laughs> it was still persevering. Ooh, well, I'm talking to somebody now. 
I'm talking about. There is a presence defending. Ooh, my voice cracked. There is a. There is the wind defending the boat. The wind is defending the boat. While the boat is being hit, it is not taking out the game. Why? Because the one who sent them was watching over them. I like this story because it reminds me to take courage. For what I cannot see has my back. Mm, that's what faith is about now. Faith is the hope and conviction of what you cannot see. Mm, have a little faith. That he who called you is the same one fighting for you and with you. That's what we all talking about today. That's what we're talking about today, church. Be of good courage that there is somebody fighting for you. And one who you cannot see. One who says that I am the laborer. Laborer in the vineyard. Ooh. <laughs> but I am fighting for my children. Because that's what he's about now. I'm trying to tell you something now. You be of good courage that the one who called you to where you are in life it's the same one fight for you. So you're so you going through something. It's all right. <laughs> so you getting hit. It's all right. <laughs> be of good courage. He's right there with you now. Right there on the water. While he, while he pushed you, he's watching over you. And then while he's fighting for you, he's walking towards you. Ooh, boy, I'm talking now. I'm talking to somebody now. MPG family, take courage. Your current situation is not. Say it with me now. Your current situation is not your final destination. Because God is a God. Come on now, let me hear you say. Let me somebody be saying that. <laughs> is there some restoration? Thank you. And God bless. Remember, God loves you and I do too. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ministries by PG, where you can see all the episodes, stay up to date with all the bloopers and content that we always put out. Thank you so much. And God bless. Alright, guys.